We need to talk about something interesting. Three years ago, I pondered this particular orb. I asked this question to my friends the other day, um, if there was some type of alien intelligence, if there was, you know, a constructed AI, artificial intelligence that comes up in the future, in, in a science fiction-esque setting, is it possible that they understand the world as Cubase race understands the world, completely devoid of emotions, or as Terry Pratchett states, completely unwilling to believe the little lies and the big ones? Is that inherently a human thing? Or I think the more optimistic outlook, and the one I like better, is that this way of kind of rationalizing an uncaring and unjust world is uh, something that all intelligences would go through or would be intrinsic to survival for any intelligent civilization. Now, me faffing about at the intersection between hard sci-fi and magical girl values isn't particularly noteworthy. I do it all the time. It only becomes odd when podcaster Lex Friedman interviews MIT professor Manolis Kellis and he says the exact same thing. Is it possible that empathy is somehow an emergent quality of significant intelligence? Conversely, as you train these large models with more parameters, the alignment becomes sometimes easier that as the systems become more capable, they actually become less dangerous than more dangerous. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it might actually be counterproductive to sort of fix the March 2023 version and not get to experience the possibly safer September 2023 version. Now, I bring this up not to brag that I'm woke as hell and I was talking about AI alignment before it was cool. Lex, hit me up, I'm available. But as I'm sure you're aware, we've seen an alarming exponential increase in technological progress related to artificial intelligences over the last six months. The pace of these changes is so absolutely absurd, I wouldn't be surprised at all if anything I say in this video is obsolete or irrelevant by the time the video gets published. We stand at the cusp of the singularity, not something that jokingly I would think about in some what-if situation. No, that what-if situation, that orb I pondered three years ago, is going to happen within the next few years. Most all of you will live to see artificial general intelligence and then shortly thereafter, super intelligent AIs. And shortly thereafter, it's entirely likely that we're headed for either utopia or apocalypse. So the problem humanity's best minds are currently struggling with right now is how do we create artificial intelligence, but create it in a way so that it doesn't either accidentally or intentionally eliminate the human race. This problem is known as AI alignment. Well, I myself best understand things through the lens of fiction and stories. Science fiction as a genre has been asking the question of AI alignment for well over 60, 70 years now. And indeed, anime itself is no stranger to these issues. Just look at something like the Animatrix. Or perhaps on a smaller, more personal scale, something like Yuki Nagato from The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. I have this kind of like conceited idea in my head that the values I've brought up and claim to be universal for all humans would somehow also help understanding with AI and better understanding through the lens of fiction itself. If we are able to learn themes and morals and values via fiction, why would a similar intelligent being not be able to or not enjoy that to some degree? Professor Manolis brings up the idea that Spider-Man is put in this ethical dilemma where he has to save both the train of innocence and the girl he loves. And that's just a tiny microcosm of the impossibilities of the decisions that any conscious sapient being has to go through in their daily lives. And this issue, this fundamental core dilemma that would be impossible for human beings, that you can't judge one life against the other, or that it's very difficult to do so, 
a value at the core of some of the best anime out there, like Madoka Magica that I've talked about. Could it be that all we need to do is let the AI recognize that ethical gray area to internalize it and stew on it like we have for thousands of years? know the irrationality of life and feel the struggle to get up every day and find some meaning, and that's all it would need to then be aligned. Could the scale of computers have finally reached the era where we stop talking about things in terms of transistors and ones and zeros and start talking about philosophies? So then we have this victory of the humanities over the hard sciences, that language was the way towards superintelligence. Then it begets that culture and art and possibly storytelling. Conveying intent and emotion through narratives may be as valuable to AI alignment, to making a superintelligence understand and respect human lives as stories have been over the course of human history for us understanding the same things. Of course, I'm no expert, and anything that I bring forth may not have the weight that it does in my mind, but you know what? I would really honestly love to hear an AI's perspective on whether or not Homer did anything wrong, or whether or not it can empathize for the loneliness of Yuki Nagato. As of right now, OpenAI is very quick to remind you that GPT-4 will never threaten to stab your headcanon, and in fact, cannot speak on this topic at least. The second idea I've been struggling with, or kind of really excited for in the coming future, is that of how generative AI is going to interact with anime. I think there's this base desire when you enjoy an intellectual property, you want to expand on it in some way. Whether that's fan art, or a fanfic, or writing an essay, or talking about a favorite show, or movie in depth and giving it some love. Participating in a fandom is in itself a generative act. Anime is uniquely positioned as the thing that generates the most emotional attachment to a fictional work. However, anime itself is absurdly difficult to create, and we've seen that more and more over the years. You require millions of dollars up front and lots of talented people with years and years of experience in order to make just one 12-episode season. The process of generative AI is lowering the bar for any type of engagement with an intellectual property. I want to talk to you a bit about where that's at and where it's going to be at in the future. My waifu is Haruhi Suzumiya, that should not come as a surprise to viewers of the channel. And I would like to participate in the official and fan-made narratives of the intellectual property. I've talked about disappearance in depth, I've made videos about the show, and I could learn to draw or write a good fanfic, certainly, but what if instead of spending thousands of hours learning to do art, I spent some time installing Stable Diffusion, downloading the Haruhi Laura, and in 30 seconds generating multiple versions of Haruhi Suzumiya launching nukes in the style of a North Korean propaganda poster or in space, or in Shakespearean cosplay, or whatever have you. Functionally, what generative AI is doing is lowering the bar for fan interaction. But that's only image generation, and that's only right now. It just happens to be that image generation is easier on hardware requirements currently than generating text. But that only means that chat generation is just a little bit behind where image generation is. Instead, imagine that one day you fed in the text of every single light novel, every single word that Haruhi Suzumiya says, into an AI like ChatGPT. And then you could talk to the AI, which had been trained on whatever the official version of Haruhi Suzumiya is. And then it would respond as if it is Haruhi Suzumiya. 
You might say, well, that's a facsimile, or that's not art itself, it's just a cheap imitation, but at some point, there becomes no delineation between the two. Because of the emotional attachment people have to fictional characters, this is an incredibly valuable bit of generative content. Instead of one author, Tanagawa, writing all of Haruhi's interactions, she now extends beyond that original script. This, of course, would be the same case for somebody writing fanfic of her. However, this is again lowering the bar for interaction in this space. I can't overstate the value of having a natural human interaction with a fictional character. One who responds fully customized to the input that you provide, or the story that you want to engage with. NVIDIA just gave an example of exactly this being used to create NPC dialogue in a video game. But an NPC is not that exciting. What I want is the generative AI to write me another Haruhi novel. Write me 10,000 new Haruhi novels. You could have hundreds of thousands of different unique individual adventures with your favorite anime characters. I shouldn't have to emphasize how incredibly valuable and powerful that future that's coming is going to be. So we've got endless written content and dialogue, and then we've got endless visual content. And yes, you can create video content just as easily. Then you see where we're going with this. We're only a few short years away from feeding in 24 episodes of the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya and all of Disappearance, and then having an AI shoot out a third season, even without the involvement of Kyoto Animation, Tanagawa, or anyone else. You may want to say slow down, you may want to say stop, you may want to have some value for intellectual property rights, things along those lines, but this is going to be a transformative thing for all fandoms. Instead of just fanfics, instead of just fan art, you're going to have fan seasons fan narratives. You're going to have like that special custom Spice and Wolf VR full dive experience, but this time Holo can remember everything that happens in the series, quote anything that came up ever, respond to even new inquiries, and yeah, you guessed it, get spicy. We've no inherent need to go there right now, but I'm sure you can imagine how unlimited possibility could also contain within it unlimited sexy times, and there would be a large cadre of people interested in that outcome. All you really need to know for generative text or writing or large language model AI right now is that we're currently limited by something called context windows. It's very difficult to contain the entire context of something like a light novel into something that the AI can use as background to generate new text. I tried interacting with a 2B model, but since she didn't have the entire script of Nier Automata, she was just imbued with the qualities of being dour and mission-focused. And when I said glory to mankind, she didn't understand. Still, the theme is that the progress is only going to increase exponentially. So astoundingly much attention and money is being put towards this. Small problems are being solved every day, and huge leaps are being made weekly. And I suppose the thing I'm most excited for is the idea that somehow we can take care of our social needs as human beings by using this new technology. There's already a thousand virtual chatbot girlfriends. We're just one piece of the puzzle away from making those girlfriends into fully realized characters from our favorite intellectual properties. I'm sure many of you have some sort of like visceral reaction against this type of thing. There might be some part of you deep inside that is yearning to tell people to touch grass. But instead, I think of this new progress in generative AI as not only deepening people's relationships with media that they already are heavily involved in, but also broadening and expanding the power of fiction to make realities that were once assumed and imagined all the more realistic and accessible and meaningful to many more people. 
If my future is to be plugged into the Matrix and kept docile and used as a battery, don't give me 1999. Instead, give me the North High Club Room of the SOS Brigade. In a situation where everybody's wearing bunny suits. The final yarn I will spin for you this evening is not so much related to AI, but another burgeoning technology. That would be the blockchain. No, I'm not suggesting again anything about NFTs or the like. I already made that video. Instead, I want to come at it from the angle of, well, Richard Nixon and Patreon. It's no secret to anyone involved in the industry that the state of anime production is a bit, well, complicated and not in a good way. One of the most edifying videos I've ever seen is Toshio Okada, the founder of Gainax, explaining the behind-the-doors, backroom business deals that go into anime production committees and getting all the funding needed up front to finance an anime. How they hungry hungry hippo up the profits, leaving little to trickle down to the animators or to the studio itself to fund further projects. Understandably, the state of the art produced under this model of capitalism can be a bit, well a bit suboptimal for all persons involved aside from the production committees. This is all to say that many anime studios are very open to and have been proactively looking for solutions to funding that are outside of the traditional production committee structure. Recently, we've seen MAPPA self-fund the entirety of Chainsaw Man, gambling whatever their studio had saved on the success of one property. When studios can cut other people out of the financing, they absolutely will. Toei Animation is notable for this. Production committees for shows like Sailor Moon Crystal only had the studio Toei, as well as the rights holder Kodansha. Studios like Kyoto Animation have tried to follow suit, try to own more and more of their intellectual properties and distribution rights, and control more and more of the art that they generate. I sat in the audience at Otakon when Otsuka, president and co-founder of Studio Trigger, told the story of having been approached by Netflix with a blank check in hand in order to create Little Witch Academia, the TV series, and how very, very nice of a situation that was to deal with one business partner alone. Now I pay Studio Trigger $5 a month on Patreon. To some degree, that direct financing is a way of breaking down this traditional structure, but it's nowhere near enough. Nor do I have any type of creative control or say, or any use case for my $5 basically donation. What if we could kill two birds with one stone, though? The concept is that of a decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO, as they're called in the cryptocurrency space. The rules or structure of a DAO can be whatever the participants want, and you can engage with them or ignore them. But let's say we had an established mid-level animation studio as a decentralized autonomous organization. Just as a hypothetical, let's imagine someone like Kyoto Animation chose to dive headfirst into this financing structure. Let's say that you made KyoAni coins and then sold them to all the fans of Kyoto Animation. Animation. If this generated enough interest, if there was enough goodwill, and if the bonuses for holding these coins were good enough, this would generate enough revenue to be able to fund the next project. And with the variability and volatility of meme coins, which have no functional use, other than investment speculation, getting into tens or hundreds of millions of dollars of market cap, the numbers do add up in this case. This would leave KyoAni not beholden to any type of rights deals made with shadowy men with cigars and business suits in Japan, but instead to the people who are interested in consuming their anime, to their biggest fans. We could write into the rules of this KyoAni DAO on the blockchain 
that the holders of the coins would be able to vote on anything. This could be anything from the next show that the animation studio would be obligated to create, to positions on the next project, who would be directing, who they should hire, to anything regarding merchandise sales or other studio projects. This is functionally equivalent to being a stockholder of a publicly traded company. But it could go beyond that too. Imagine even revenue sharing. For every Blu-ray sale of the next Sarune, or whatever the hell we vote on, I would assume it would be another season of Haruhi Suzumiya, then everyone who holds the KyoAni coin could have some percentage of the Blu-ray sale given to them as royalties. And all of this would happen automatically, publicly, without any room for duplicity or closed doors or I know a guy. This new funding method could be an entirely new way to not only solve the industry's problems with the production committee method, but also to engage fans on a level that would be inconceivable without this technology. Oh, but uh, Richard Nixon, you didn't think we'd forgotten him, did you? In 1971, Richard Nixon took the US dollar off the gold standard, establishing what has become known as fiat currency, or currency that is backed by nothing tangible. This has been the way the world has operated over the last 50 years, and all major currencies are fiat currencies. I'm sure you've heard millions of stories by now of either US or your country's own currency being inflated away. The scope of monetary policy is a bit too large for this video. All we need to know is that the value of any currency is only the value of the faith that the people that use that currency have in the institution behind or issuing that currency. The technology is there now to issue currency for any entity. Though it won't happen today or tomorrow, sometime a nation state will be less trustworthy than something like Amazon, or Apple, or even a mid-size animation studio. The US dollar will always be tied to the presence of aircraft carriers policing the world's oceans and the stability of our court systems. But sometime in the future, there's a distinct possibility that people in Kyoto could be buying their groceries with KyoAni bucks, and by so doing, help the next Violet Evergarden movie be made. And then we're just a hop, step, and a jump away from Kyoto Animation having its own aircraft carriers in the South Pacific. It's a fanciful future, I admit. I'm sure most every securities lawyer and regulator ever is salivating just at the thought of it. The logistics would probably be overwhelming and that's why we don't see it already. And every national government is going to resist the loss of power that comes along with the loss of their currency monopoly. But we're dealing with hypotheticals and the far future, and it's certainly not impossible. The concept that Patreon production companies and a company's stock may all be rolled up into one and publicly viewable on the blockchain in the near future honestly gives me hope for the anime industry. And if nothing else, it's at least a very interesting idea. I hope that you have all enjoyed these diatribes, these looks into the future, and these simple what-ifs. Until next time, or until the human race is wiped out by belligerent AI, I wish you all the best of luck in making the world a more interesting place.